to SW. My name is Aline Fries. And my name is Isa Berisha and I work here as a project engineer for SW. I'm here today to interview Isa. We're actually at the shop floor at SW in Waldmersing in Germany. And uh, I'm here to learn more about the brake caliper operation on our machines. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, we're able to machine cast iron parts and aluminum parts in all kind of varies. Uh, here we are in front of a W0442. That means it has four spindles. Uh, we have a working area and a loading area. The loading is done simultaneous. So that means as long as you are while loading the parts, the machine is able to machine these kind of calipers. Um, we have here an aluminum part. Therefore, we can use uh, W0442. Uh, it has linear motors. It has a 3X unit, uh, a mono block which guarantees a high stiffness. The 3X unit is high dynamic. We're able um, to do a tool change within 2.4 seconds for all four tools, of course. And yeah, that's the right machine to choose for this part. As long as it is not a cast iron because the linear motors would not accommodate that really well. But we have the bolt screw for that as well. So whatever your part it consists of, we will find the right solution for you. Let's talk a little bit exactly. about the process and the clamping positions. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? We uh, usually we work or we've produced these parts within two operations. The first operation includes um, drilling and reaming the piston bore, uh, the space of the brake, um, the groove that is within the bore, then uh, unclamping it, putting in operation 20 and doing feed bleed port and all the other ma machining needed. This kind of part requires uh, very low tolerances, low tolerance of, of the piston bore, of the surface of the piston bore, surface of the groove and this all in respect to then operation 20 of the fixing here and the feed bleed port and other components. So this is basically our solution for a uh, lot of, for the caliper, for uh, all kind of, from a very small caliper up to calipers for, for trucks or anything else. They just don't fit on the W04 anymore. We have bigger machines for that. Exactly. <laughs> um, what I know it's not something that is supposed to happen, but it always, not always, but it sometimes happens that a tool breaks. What are we doing then? Or what is the operator doing then? Yeah, in case of a tool breaks, uh, I mean, um, especially if a very small tool breaks, like a 3.2 uh, diameter drill on uh, OP20 for the feed or bleed port, uh, we have our uh, SW brake control, which is done inductive. Uh, it gives you an alarm in case of a tool breaks, it gives you an alarm and you're able to react. The machine will stop automatically and uh, you guys can change the tool or have a look at the tool and see what's going on, what happened. The operator can really easily walk around the machine and change the tool um, at the window with its panel so it's not a complicated process if it happens during machining the machining process doesn't even have to stop you can just continue machining while changing the tool exactly I think that was a great insight and a first start for everyone um, who knows or is interested in this workpiece if you are machining any of these work pieces or are looking into them let us have a look as well. Let us see if we are maybe faster or have a better process. We always try to be more efficient and find a solution that suits your needs. Thank you, Isa, for your time and for Thank the interview. Thank you, Ali. And we hope to hear from you. Thank you very much.